Welcome to today's lesson on mass and weight. In this lesson, we will explore the difference between mass and weight. Let's join Aaron and Keke as we investigate this idea further. Now, I know these two words are often used to mean the same thing, but in physics, they actually have very different meanings. For example, the sample of sugar here weighs 0 0.25 kilograms. But are we recording the weight of the sugar or the mass? Weight is the force due to gravity, and force is measured in newtons, not in kilograms. So when we say the mass of sugar is 0 0.25 kilograms, we're actually talking about the mass, not its weight. Like we do in everyday life, the mass, we measure it in kilograms. And the weight is measured in Newton. That's in physics. Now I'm going to show you how the mass actually relates to quantity in it. I'm going to measure 0 0.5 kilograms of sugar in there to see the difference, to see which one has got more granules. Let's have it over here. It's back to zero there. I'm going to pour in 0 0.5 kilograms. There we go. Now take a close look at this two. You can clearly see that this one here, 0 0.25 kilograms, there's less granules, and 0 0.5 kilograms, there is more granules of sugar in it. Back to your studio, KK. Thanks, Aaron. Now that we recognize that the terms mass and weight are different, let's think about how they relate to each other. Have a look at these two packets of sugar. This one has a mass of 0 0.5 kilograms, while the second one has a mass of 2.5 kilograms. If I hold the first packet of sugar out in front of me, I can feel the gravitational force of the Earth pulling this sugar downwards. What would happen to the force pulling downwards if I picked up the second packet instead? You could try the same activity using any objects that have different masses. Compare what you feel when you hold both objects in front of you. Clearly the object with a greater mass has a stronger force pulling it downwards. This force is in fact the weight of the sugar. So the weight of an object is directly related to its mass. The greater the mass, the greater the weight. So far we have found that the weight and acceleration due to gravity are related. The greater the acceleration due to gravity, the greater the weight of an object. In fact, weight and acceleration due to gravity are directly proportional. We also know that weight and mass are related. These two are also directly proportional. In physics, we can represent this relationship in one equation. Weight is equal to m, the mass of the object, multiplied by g, the magnitude of gravitational acceleration. Thanks, KK. We can therefore calculate the weight of an object on Earth using this equation. Weight equals the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. If we want to calculate the weight of an object on Earth, we would use gravity as 9,8 meters per second squared. Let's calculate the weight of the same object on Earth and then on the Moon to compare this idea. Let's calculate the weight of a 75-kilogram astronaut on Earth and then on the Moon. The gravitational acceleration on the Moon is six times smaller than on Earth. To calculate the weight of the astronaut on Earth, we multiply the mass of the astronaut with the gravitational acceleration on Earth and we get 735 newtons. The gravitational acceleration on the Moon is a sixth compared to the gravitational acceleration on Earth. We therefore use 1.6 meters per second to the negative 2, and we find that his weight is 120 newtons. That is why the astronaut can jump higher on the Moon using the same energy, because the gravitational acceleration is less on the Moon compared to the Earth.
The same astronaut weighs 120 newtons on the moon and 735 newtons on Earth. We measure mass using a triple beam balance. An object is placed on the scale pan and masses are added until the pointer rests in equilibrium. We record the mass of an object in grams or kilograms. When we want to find the weight of an object, we use a spring balance. The weight is suspended on a hook on the spring balance and its weight is measured in Newton. The gravitational force is pulling the object downwards. This downward force causes the spring to stretch and moves the measuring indicator so that you can read off a measurement of the force on the scale. The scales we use every day, like kitchen scales or bathroom scales, make use of the fact that mass and weight are related. When you stand on a bathroom scale, your weight pushes downward. Your weight pushes down on a lever that turns a needle to point to a reading. The scale uses the relationship between weight and mass to convert the force applied into a mass reading in kilograms. So, kitchen and bathroom scales are actually finding weight, but it is then converted into mass. But will a scale that is designed for Earth work on the moon? Think about this carefully. Which of these two instruments, the triple beam balance or the scale, will have the same reading for an apple on Earth as it does on the moon? If you have come to the correct solution, then you already know a lot about the differences between mass and weight. Here is the answer. The triple beam balance measures the mass of the apple. Mass is the amount of matter contained in an apple. The amount of matter in the object doesn't change when you take it to the moon, but its weight does change. Weight is a force due to gravity. It acts on objects pulling them down towards the center of the planet. On Earth, an apple weighs six times more than it does on the moon because the magnitude of gravitational acceleration on Earth is six times more than it is on the moon. Astronauts don't have less apple to eat on the moon. It just weighs less. The reading on the spring balance changes when you measure the weight of the apple on Earth and on the Moon. As you can see, it is very important to come to a good understanding of mass and weight. Another calculation we can do is to calculate the gravitational acceleration on a planet if we have the mass and radius of the specific planet. The mass of the Earth is about 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The distance from the center of the Earth is over 6,000 kilometers. We know that the force due to gravity is given by mass times gravitational acceleration. We also know the formula for Newton's law of universal gravitation. When we put these together and cancel the mass of the object that appears on both sides, we get this equation. Remember, G is the universal gravitational constant. We can therefore substitute these values into the equation to calculate the gravitational acceleration on the Earth. And we find an answer of 9,8 meters per second squared, as we would expect. You could do the same calculation for other planets to find the value of gravitational acceleration on that planet, for example, on Mars. The mass and radius of Mars are given, and when we do the same calculation, we get that the gravitational acceleration on Mars is 3,7 meters per second squared. Now that we have differentiated between mass and weight, you can try our task on mass and weight in the task video. The task video and other related videos can be found on the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.